are back at the APOR conference with uh, Chris Bork, who is the director of the Institute of Public Opinion at uh, Muhlenberg College, uh, who you probably, whose name you may recognize from the polls from Pennsylvania that we reported in the fall. Uh, Chris just presented a paper on the incumbent rule, which longtime readers of Mystery Pollster will remember, but maybe not everyone. So why don't we start by explaining what is the incumbent rule? Sure, thanks, Mark. The incumbent rule is, is this general notion that as elections approach, the individual who is the challenger in the race will receive most of the non-allocated votes, and the incumbents will track close to what their final poll numbers are. And the theory has always been that individuals who uh, are undecided near polling time probably have not have made up their mind on the incumbent. They know the incumbent. They feel that, that there's not much new that can change their minds, but have yet to really commit to the challenger. And then at the last moment, they're going to commit to the right. challenger. And it's always an issue of, of, uh, in Pennsylvania this year. Oh, yeah. I, if I remember right, the McCain campaign was arguing that we should be thinking that uh, even though he wasn't the incumbent, that perhaps all the undecided would go to uh, Absolutely. So we were getting that. a non-incumbent rule. Over right. and over again, right. that question was coming so, up. There were some previous studies. Um, uh, a gentleman named Nick Panagakis, yeah. uh, who's a longtime APOR member, found that in the uh, 70s, 80s, early 90s, there was an incumbent. There's some evidence of an effect. What have you found? Uh, absolutely. The older studies have shown uh, a series of studies. The Nick study mm -hmm. uh, was about 80% of unallocated votes actually did go to challengers. And this was from the 70s to the late 80s. Or at least as the, the average of the, the polls the as polls. compared to the average of the results. Absolutely, yeah. Right. So you can say it more accurately. Uh, and then there were some studies uh, in the 1990s that showed it diminishing. It's still, if you looked at a proportion of unallocated votes, they still tended to break towards the challengers. But what we found over the last few cycles and most notably with the paper I gave today in, in 2008, not only does there not appear to be an incumbent effect anymore, but also that in this particular cycle, this is only one election cycle, ch incumbents actually received a greater share of unallocated votes than challengers this time by almost a two-to-one margin, right. which really has flipped the whole uh, dynamic that we've seen in the past on its head. And, and it just made me think this was looking at uh, races for Senate and Governor? Senate and Governor races only. About how many of those were there in 08? There, there were, with an incumbent in right, the race, right. there were about 35. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the, 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 the more recent evidence is sort of all over the place. There, there's, there's not really any clear incumbent pattern. Yeah. So what does this tell us about how to interpret uh, the percentage of the last survey that's undecided. Yeah, it tells us that there's probably a lot more going on than simply this incumbent rule that, right. that was often cited and is still cited in the in the media. That there's probably other factors in there, uh, number of polls, other other type of polling specific criteria that might be might be leading to that, or some kind of candidate centric uh, characteristics that we might not be accounting for. You know, one of the individuals in, in the audience today gave a good point. Maybe it's something about the, the ink challengers not being as challenger-like as they right. used to be. Maybe they're more known quantities. So it leads us to say that there's probably a lot more there. People right. look at it. Um, I, and, and just one other sort of thing i get your reaction to. Sort of the implicit assumption of the incumbent rule, and I was as much a, I, I use that to interpret findings quite a bit when I did surveys for congressional candidates. The assumption that uh, the support for the two candidates was pretty much set, and the only dynamic between the last poll and, and the election day uh, it, near the end would be about changes of you know, people deciding. Is, could we be seeing, uh, you know, changes of preference, uh, or just simple errors in the survey yeah, uh, I, that, that, that mess this up? I think probably both. Right. I think probably both. And, and to, to some degree, you are going to see changes in preference. I don't think it's, I mean, again, we're talking small percentages when you look at at these unallocated voters, uh, but enough in a close race that might have have an impact. And then again, as you said, some of the, the, the survey-specific criteria okay. could be playing with that also. So your quick advice to journalists uh, in interpreting polls at the end of the election is? Stop citing the incumbent rule. We do, challengers, final votes do not always break to the challengers. Okay. Uh, throw that one out. Very good. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark.